Hello everybody, it's Terry back again another video. Alright guys, today's video is going to be about... I have, I have some little break here at my work and when I have break... Why not do a video? Why not talk about tennis? What not, why, why not analyzing tennis and pick up some topics that I f find interesting and maybe some of you also can find it interesting. And one of the topics that are really fl fresh and, and is really big uh, of course, it is the new world. It is the new uh, Grand Slam record leader. Uh, at least alone, he's alone at that top. He was a, a Grand Slam leader together with Rafa Nadal before at 22 Grand Slam titles each. I'm talking about Djokovic, of course, who shared the Grand Slam record with Nadal before. Now, since 10 days back or one week, he is alone. Alone at the top by tennis fans all around the world. Novak Djokovic stands alone at 23 Grand Slam titles. And he's, of course, the record holder of, in winning most Grand Slam titles in the history of men's tennis. The big question is now, because some of you seem to believe that this record can never be broken. The 23 Grand Slam titles, besides from Novak Djokovic himself, who has, who has the record himself. I don't agree with this. I absolutely don't agree with this. Is Novak Djokovic's 23 Grand Slam titles a locked-in record? No! It isn't my tennis fans all over the world. Who in hell believed 20 years ago, 21 years ago, when? Pistol Pete Sampras won his 14 major at US Open 2002. That a dude, seven years later, will come and sur catch him and surpass him. And that dude is named Roger Federer. Not many. I personally, I didn't find the Pistol Pete's Grand Slam record at 14 Grand Slam titles a huge record. I'll be honest with you guys. It is not. If you look, if you call, if you look at Pistol Pete's 14 Grand Slam titles closely, it is actually, according to me, that is this is my feeling. This is my opinion. You you guys don't need to agree with this. According to me, that is one of the most overrated records. If you if you, if you just look closely, Pistol Pete never won three Grand Slam titles in one se in one season. He never did that. The mostly he won was two. Never did he won three Grand Slam titles in one season. And beside, before him, who had the record? The Australian dude, Roy Emerson, with 12 Grand Slam titles. So, breaking a record with, 12, with a dude who has won 12 Grand Slam titles, which, which Pistol Pete did with 14, that is not a, that is a great achievement. Absolutely, that is a great achievement. But that is not an astonishing achievement. That is not an impeccable achievement. 40 Grand Slam titles, that should not be impossible to beat. That should not be. That should not be. I'm, I'm not saying that should be easy, but for sure, far, far, miles, miles away from impossible to beat. And Roger Federer proved that. He did that in seven years' time, between 2003 to 2000 to 2009 six year it, not, it, it, it didn't even took seven in six years Roger won 15 Grand Slam titles between 2003 to 2009 that is 15 Grand Slam titles which Roger Federer won we all know when he won that 2009 Wimbledon final against Andy Roddick and Pistol Pete was on the crowd and watching that match when Roger Federer broke his record. In six years' time, Roger Federer won 15 Grand Slam titles, between 2003 to 2009. So, Pistol Pete's record of 40 Grand Slam titles is one of the most overrated records in tennis, according to me. It really is. All right, we go ahead, because I don't have so much time. Then Roger Federer was the rock record holder when he won his 20th Grand Slam title in 2018. All right? And back then, Novak Djokovic had 12 Grand Slam titles. And Rafael Nadal had 17 Grand Slam titles. All right? In the 2008, 2018, 2018, January, when Roger won his last Grand Slam title 
his 20th Grand Slam title. Novak was at 12, Rafa was at 17. Back then, now Rafa was only two behind in that 2018 season, at the start of the season, after, after Astral Open was finished, all right? Not the beginning, because obviously in the beginning, Roger had 19. But after Astral Open was finished, 2018, Roger had 20, Rafa 17, Novak 12. Not many believed that Novak would go ahead and win 11 Grand Slam titles in five years. For sure, not me. I will be honest with you. I didn't believe that. That time, five years ago, I con considered Nadal as no Roger's biggest threat. I should, because, let's face it, he was only two behind. Novak was eight behind Roger. And he just came back from injury, R R R R Novak Djokovic, and he start, He lost fourth round at Astral Open 2018, I remember. Then he lost early at Indian Wells uh, against Tyro Daniel, if I'm not mistaken. And then he lost in Miami against Philippe Koschreiber pretty early, Novak Djokovic. He was not in his best of his... He, it was, he was definitely not in his best shape of his life, Djokovic. I didn't believe Novak would go ahead and win 11 Grand Slams. I really didn't do, he will do that. This, what Novak has done in five years' time, unbelievable achievement. Unbelievable, mind-boggling achievement, really. Nadal, that he won, that Nadal surpassed Roger, I'm not shocked, I'm not surprised at all. He, just, he was just too behind. And considering how great of a clay court player he is, and he, he, it was more or less a locked-in win tournament, the French Open for Rafa Nadal. Locked-in win tournament. We all know that. He was more or less unbeatable at French Open. He, he more or less won the French Open every single year, Nadal. So that Nadal won, he won, won five more Grand Slam titles from 2018 to 2022, because Nadal won his latest Grand Slam title, French Open, last year, 2022. That is not surprising me. That is not. But he surpassed Roger with 22. But a Djokovic went to surpass, to surpass both Nadal and Roger, that is little surprisingly. At least not many believe that five years ago. All right? What is my point? My point is that when you are a good tennis player, like obviously not good, they are great tennis players, Djokovic, Nadal and Federer, you can never count them out. You just can't never do it. They are superior tennis players. They are the three greatest tennis players of all time. Djokovic, the greatest tennis is the greatest tennis player of all time alone. Now I'm coming into Carlos Alcaraz. Carlos Alcaraz has played five, four or five Grand Slam tournaments in his career. Maximum six. Between four to six Grand Slam tournaments Carlos Alcaraz has played so far in his young career. He has already won one. Djokovic won, has won eight, 23 Grand Slam titles in 70 Grand Slam appearances. Nadal has won 22 Grand Slam titles in 67 Grand Slam appearances. Federer has the worst ratio here. Federer has won 20 Grand Slam titles in 81 Grand Slam appearances. Jo Alcaraz, if he just maintains healthy, if he can make his body healthy, because he has injuries time to time, because injuries, if you're injury prone, like maybe Carlos Alcaraz is, then he will not come close to to win a lot of Grand Slam titles. At least he will not come close to winning 20 Grand Slam titles. But if he's healthy and he doesn't have super icons, super goats like Federer and Nadal on his way, like Djokovic has had with Federer and with Nadal, and vice versa with Nadal with Djokovic and Federer with Djokovic and Nadal, and Carlos Alcaraz doesn't have that kind of a problem. He has rivals like Rune, like Sinner. They are not Djokovic, they are not Federer, they are not Nadal. Carlos Alcaraz can win 20 Grand Slam titles in 15 years' time from now. He can do it. For, for Djokovic to have a locked-in Grand Slam title record, he needs to win more than 23 Grand Slam titles, my tennis fans, all around the world. He needs to be between 25 to, to 30 Grand Slam titles to have that locked-in Grand Slam record that will be almost impossible to beat. And even before I wrap this video out, some of the records that I forgot to mention yesterday that will be almost impossible to beat is the world number one consecutive in weeks, which Federer has 237 weeks in consecutive weeks in world number one. Rafael Nadal's 912 weeks at, at it in top 10 
also will be um, really, really difficult to beat, which I forgot to mention yesterday. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and see you next time. Peace.